Good day and welcome to the Herbert Denard Show. We have as our special guest today, two young ladies, Sister Teresa from Daybreak. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Rhonda Stubbs. Mm -hmm. She's a case manager working with Daybreak. Yes. Number one, what is Daybreak? Okay, Daybreak is a resource center here in uh, Macon, Georgia for our brothers and sisters who are homeless or on the edge of homeless, where they can come and receive the basic necessities of life. Uh, it was really started by several women from different churches coming together and saying, how can we respond to the needs of our brothers and sisters? And they connected with DePaul USA and started this center where First thing in the morning, they arrive and they can get breakfast. They can get a clean shower, clean clothes by doing their laundry, um, breakfast. They can have a room to sit and either be warm in the winter or not too hot in the summer. Uh, and then they also have access to our computers and telephones, a medical clinic, and our wonderful case managers. Yeah. So it really is to support them through the day, but also not only to give them fish, but to say, okay, how can we help you make the steps so that you too can fish? Homeless people, so there's a lot of them in making there everywhere. You see them on the street corners, you see them everywhere. Homeless people that has no place to go. So they can come by Daybreak, that's located where? On 174 Walnut. So if you know where Central City Park is, we're right across, right past um, Martin Luther King. So we're right where it's easy access for them to get to. Okay. Case manager, mm -hmm. Rhonda Stubbs. Tell us, case manager, what is it that you do? As a case manager, what I do is I help our participant who comes in today break to find resources for housing. We also help them to find resources for employment. For instance, um, One Stop Agency, which is located in the Department of Labor, we will help them to create a resume. Once that resume is created, we will also do like interviewing with them. Once they have that skill down pack, then we will refer them over there where they will have an opportunity to get a job. We see people on the river, we see people in vacant houses, we see people in any place where they could just lay there and put a, a blanket over them or to get in out of the weather. Why, in your opinion, do we have so many homeless people in this area? Yeah, there's about, about 300 on any given night. About 130 or so of those are in shelters, um, like the Salvation Army or transitional housing. And then another half of them are really literally outside braving the elements. They could be due to multiple causes. Sometimes if you are in a low wage position and you lose your job, that's it. If you have a health issue or your child or spouse has a health issue where you're losing work and the bills are raising, many people end up losing their houses. Um, we have one gentleman who wants so much to work he just has a lower IQ. If I look at him, he looks just like you and me. And he even wants to, we try to get our participants to volunteer with us because they start getting job skills. Mm -hmm. And even on some of our simple volunteer tasks, he wants to do it, but without someone supervising. So some, there are people in our society that don't have the, the IQ. There's also mental health is a, a, is a huge cross. Um, we have one man who's an amazing musician that actually plays at some churches. 
and when he's on his medicine, he's amazing. But because of finance or because of other reasons, if you go off the medicine, you can just see him circle the drain. So there's mo the other thing is domestic violence. You know, it's hard to be a one-income person or you have to get away from a domestic violence. Many, many uh, people who are victims of domestic violence end up. Uh, we have veterans. About 25% of the population of homelessness can be vets who are facing the challenges of coming back or, or trauma, post-traumatic stress. Um, and not only vets have post-traumatic stress, any of us have been in a violent situation. Those stresses can really keep you from keeping long-term employment. So there, it's multifaceted. So uh, tell me what, I'm switching. What's, what does the case manager do at daybreak? He, they fill out, uh, help them fill out uh, employment opportunities, help them do? We do, we help them to fill out their job application. And as a case manager also, we are the ones there to listen to them. Some of them, they come in there, they're so broken. Um, we had one young lady, as a matter of fact, she's, she was living in her tent. She came in there, she's so broken because of life. We're there to help counsel her, to lead her to professional counseling. Once um, she went through the stages that we had set up for her as a case manager, she ended up with a wonderful opportunity to work for a company. She's there now. She's loving it. Um, she's also um, found housing for, us, for herself. She's one of our success stories. And as a case manager, we are there to let them know, yes, you are going through this situation now. This is where you are now, but this is not a place you have to be forever. Daybreak, you also have clinics in there that uh, I think they test a person's blood pressure and they give them other medical help. Tell us a little about that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know it's winter time now, right? <coughs> <coughs> I'm just getting over cold. How many times do you go to the medicine cabinet in your bathroom to get cough drops, to get Tylenol, to just get Benadryl, mm -hmm. um, maybe a laxative. Um, so sometimes you don't realize when you're homeless some of the basic things you don't have. A Band-Aid. Mm. Um, so it's those basic things. But it's also, if you think about, we all have a loved one that's come out of a hospital and you're like, oh, they're not ready to be out. They need all this care. Well, if you're coming out of the hospital like that and you're sleeping on the street or in a tent, so we provide services, like for example, some of our people can't manage all their medicines and get it into the medicine box. So Sister Judy, she gets their medicines and every week they come in and she gives them their medicine tray for the week, which helps to maintain them on their medicine. Uh, another person is insulin diabetic and insulin isn't stable outside in the heat. So we keep the insulin he comes in every morning, checks his blood sugar, does his insulin, and he's fine and stable. If he wasn't, he'd be in our emergency room all the time. Let me, let me do something that you and I never went over this path before. Okay. Tell us something about Sister Teresa. Where did she come from? Sister Teresa. Yeah. Be careful. I'm not no. saying yeah. Mother Teresa. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Sister There's one Teresa. Mother Teresa. So Sister Therese, I was born in Chicago, and I was born the eighth of 12 children. Um, and my family, one of the things my parents always told us is that each of you are made to make a difference in the world. And I knew that I could do that because I had the neighborhood, I had the church, I had my school, I had my family that all supported me in doing that. And so, yeah, I had a lot of bumps and different things, but I did it. And then, in high school, <coughs> sorry, I went down 
and to the inner city. And I started realizing in the inner city of Chicago that there are people who didn't have a family. We were reaching out in a nursing home that had people who had drug addictions, alcohol addictions, <coughs> me. and they had been abandoned by their families. And as I was reaching out to them, I realized, one, that I had a gift of being able to look at you and say, Rhonda, you're amazing. Yes, you may have had these struggles. Yes, things may have been happening to you. But God loves you. And I also realized that their energy, their desire to be God's people energized me. And so I really felt that God was calling <coughs> Sorry. Can we cut this back? Let me get it. Okay. So oh, sorry, I got this cough. Okay. So as I was reaching out to these people in Chicago, there was a connection I felt. And I felt God saying, Teresa, you have been given so much. Can you share my love with those who haven't experienced it? And you know what? How do you know that God loves you if you've been cut off from every angle by family and friends? And so then I became a daughter of charity and have been a daughter of charity for 37 years, serving um, the poor wherever I've been sent. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Briefly, tell us about you. Well, my name is Rhonda Stubbs. I am here from Macon. My passion has always been to help people, especially the vulnerable population. Um, I'm a proud graduate of Mercy University, and my um, bachelor's work was in human services with a focus in mental health. When I saw this opportunity with Daybreak, um, it was just amazing that I was just so drawn to that. And once I went and interviewed for the position and Sister Teresa was telling me about the position, I knew I could make a difference in the participant lives. And this is where God wanted me to be. And it's, it's been a very great journey. I know you guys are doing a lot. A lot of unnamed people are at Daybreak on Walnut Street, helping a lot of homeless people bathe. You, they have a place they can bathe, giving them something to eat, uh, and pushing them in the right direction and helping them medically and however else mm -hmm. you could help them. What I want to know, you have a big event coming up a big sleep out on February the 22nd. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Okay, well, if you go to makeonsleepout.com, you can learn all about it. But really, our whole budget is fundraised. The churches in Macon provide a portion of it, but this sleep out provides a major portion of it. And somebody said, why do you have it in February? We have it in February. Because it's not just a sense of fundraising, but it's a sense of how can you be in solidarity with our brothers and sisters who are homeless. And so, basically, people register to be a sleeper, and then they raise money. You know, you can ask your Facebook friends, you can email your friends. If everybody gives you $2, it starts adding up. And Friday night, we'll gather at daybreak, and we'll have a little soup, a simple meal, um, because that's what our, our people have. And learn a little bit about the plight. Hear from some of us what the homeless is. And you will set up your tent or your sleeping bag right behind daybreak, and you will spend the night outside. Suppose, and in the morning, we do it. Go suppose ahead. Suppose it's about 10 degrees. Well, if it's about 10 degrees, our homeless brothers and sisters will be outside. But I'm praying it'll be a warm <laughs> night, let me tell you. And then someone say, well, why are you having it? You will. I'll have it on a Thursday night. Why don't you do it on a weekend? Well, you know, those that sleep out in the tents, they have jobs. Some of them have jobs, but not enough to pay for housing. And they have to come, get to daybreak, get a shower, get breakfast, and get to work looking like nothing has ever happened to them. 
And know. so that's why we invite people to come in solidarity. I, I talked to the mayor of Macon, mm -hmm. the city of Macon once, and uh, he said he he experienced it once, and he said he don't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's cold out there, and, and I've been out in the cold before, but I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for it. <laughs> all right. And hopefully it'll all work out uh, for all of us. And we hopefully I can get my friends to help me raise some money to help Daybreak. Uh, they do an absolutely marvelous job of, of helping the, those that are least among us, people that don't have a place to go. For whatever reason they are there, Daybreak does not ask them questions, does not condemn them, them. Just you help feed them, you help uh, where they could shower and clean up, where they could uh, get some checkups medically, and uh, sometimes you have clothes that they could have, and they could brush their teeth. You, they could do so many things there, and it's giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate what you guys are doing. You got a lot of volunteers, and I just like to say that. If you can't give, volunteer, help out. Yeah, you we have people that, that, that come down every week. Um, it's great, you know, because you're you are walking with them, talking with them. But we have volunteers we need every single day, Monday through Friday, seven thirty in the morning till four in the afternoon. And give us the address again. One seven four Walnut Street. One seven four Walnut Street. Please come by. Drop off some coffee for us, come volunteer for us, and February 22nd, we are going to have a grand time sleeping out. And it's going to be warm. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much. And thanks for all your support of Daybreak. You have just been wonderful. Not enough, but I do what I can. But we'll be right back. <laughs>